You're listening to Inside Melbourne, the official podcast of the Melbourne Football Club. Proudly presented by Zurich Insurance, ensuring the things you truly love, like this podcast. Hey, these fans, welcome to a special edition of Inside Melbourne. We're in isolation. My name is Ben Gibson. This is not how we predicted the 2020 podcast to go ahead, but we're making do with what we've got. We're on Zoom and I've got two special guests. Firstly, the captain of the footy club who's enjoying some toast, Max Gorn. Hello, Max. Hello, Benny. Hello, Toby. Oh, sorry, no, we haven't announced Toby yet. Sorry. Still my thunder. Go on. Up. <laughs> <Thank> you, <Max>. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Bedford. Hey, Tobes. G'day, how are you? Very good. Now, we're going to have AFLW superstar Lily Mithen join us shortly. But firstly, boys, what exactly are you up to? It's day four of isolation. Things are getting a little bit weird. Yeah, I've taken... um. On sorry, I'm talking with your mouth for, and everyone can see that as well. Um, <laughs> I've taken Sunderland so far from Divi One back to the championship. Um, so another couple of days, they should be in the Premier League. That's on FIFA 20. If those FIFA. playing at home, I'm getting a lot of PlayStations being played at the moment. What are you up to, Tobes? Nah, my household's a bit different. We actually um we turned to Wii Golf. Um, that's what we've been doing in our spare time. Um, there's a bit of a tournament in the, um, the household at the moment, so coming second at the moment, just behind Corey Wagner. But uh, hopefully uh, before our isolation done, I'll be on top. Very good. Now, Maxie, you've dressed up the apartment, the house quite nicely there. What have you got going on in the background? This is just the 2015 New Zealand, uh, unfortunately runner-up to your team, Benny, the Aussies, but just a signed bat. Um, I, it was... I didn't bring it out. It was just randomly sitting there on the table beforehand. This is where it goes. Um, got the fiddle leaf, which is growing to an amazing length behind me. That's my, that's my job, keeping that fiddle leaf up. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. Very good. Now, I've noticed a few of the boys have been doing some funny things on Instagram. Angus Brayshaw is one of them. Tobes, have you seen what he's doing and can you explain what is going through his mind? Yeah, I actually have seen this. The Barbie onions. So, him... Himself and I think Charlie Spargo and a few other people all talk about their barbecue onions as being, you know, their favourite food in the entire world. So I think now that we have a bit more spare time on our hands, he's kind of taken it to the next level and made a bit of an Instagram post about it and or page and posting all about the barbecue onions. He's actually think, he's actually influenced me. If you hold on one second, yeah. <laughs> is this is this good podcasting that I'm not on the screen right now? Following content. Yeah. I've um. Showing off the house. I went and got a bag of onions today. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited to cook some Barbie onions tonight. Um, and I think episode two, which is tonight, is cooking with butter. So I'm gonna, it's going to be an interest. I'm going to try and copy him step by step. Um, so which is Instagram influence. Yeah, he's a bit, yeah. that's influencing. Very good. I also know it's Josh Wagner. Was he making a surfboard or doing something quite extravagant? Yeah, he's been making a surfboard for the past couple of weeks now but he's just finished shaping it um so i think he's going to do a bit more i think he's going to put five glass and stuff over it now and then probably try and take it out for a surf and see how it goes Very good. that'd be good just just in time for lockdown <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, okay. stare at that inside his home and then jack viney sam weederman getting their missus to cut their hair what's the go with that oh wow i haven't seen that yeah i don't think it's looking too good just yet so another well, yeah Another important thing is keeping fit. Uh, I've seen a few of the boys trying to do home gyms. What are your setups like? Um, eating peanut butter toast is not it. Sorry for <laughs> I, I love I love peanut butter. Um, my home gym setup. You know what? I can take you there, Benny. For sure, Max. It's not much. Um, it's just a couple of things that I got from a club. Um, you basically got a chair, <laughs> some plates. There'd be golf clubs in the back. Um, that's me pride and joy there, Benny, the bike. Bike. Took that for a ride. Um, to- yeah, I went for a ride today. Got the gym mat and the trap bar down there as well. So that's the, uh, that's the home gym. Very impressive. So do the boys just steal stuff from the club, take it all home? Yeah. Um, I tried to do mine without anyone noticing, so I get to keep it, but... Um, I'll suss out how that goes. I don't think Toby's household has anything yet. Do, no, we don't have it at the moment. We're waiting for yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Ah, so you get hoping, to put some more up tomorrow. Yeah, we're hoping that we get a fair bit of tomorrow, but at the moment we have nothing. We literally have 
two 14 do, uh, kilo dumbbells and that's it. Not as much as your bench anyway, is it? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Johnny, you're a bit of a cricket fan. Have you seen Shane Warm home set up? Yeah, um, to be fair, I got bored of that post. He started playing golf at the very start and I find X golf very boring and I'd stopped. So I didn't actually get to see what the rest of the house looked like. Was it good? Uh, it was more impressive than most of ours, I reckon. So <laughs> <laughs> a little bit jealous of that. We've isolated Casey Fields for a couple of weeks. A bit of a different setup. How do you guys enjoy that? Yeah, well, I've enjoyed it quite well. Like, I think um, at the start, like, a lot of boys were whinging and uh, complaining about the trip down. But the more we got used to it, like, you can see that on our Instagram page, we've been playing golf there. We've been playing a fair bit of cricket out in the, out in the Oval. So I think the, more, the longer we've been there, the more the boys have been embraced it. But, yeah, um, it, was, Luke it was good. Did you see that? Yeah, Luke Jackson's golf. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was horrible. <laughs> I'm not much better, Benny, but that was... Um, yeah, it didn't look great. No. To be fair, golf was one of the only things we could do for the last two weeks, and now that's sort of taken away from us as well. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's taken away from us. It's pretty unclear what we can do or not. I'll just stay yeah. home because that seems like the clearest thing to do. That's true. And do you think there's any potential of actually going back to Casey Fields once this is all over and we get the season underway? Um, yeah, I, I didn't mind it when we were there for two weeks. Um, I'm not sure if this just goes away, so I don't know if we can have four clubs in the one building like we had. Um, when you look at that from afar, you go, wow, how did we not pick up on that in the first place? So um, it's a little bit intriguing, but I reckon we could potentially beat the fields for a couple of months. And we spoke before a little bit about your yeah, home gyms and doing fitness and whatnot. I guess, is it hard to sort of stay motivated to work out all day at the moment? Uh, it's, not, it's not too bad because um, there's not much else really to do. Um, yeah. I just lost PlayStation. I played, I've joined the PlayStation crew, which is not me. Like I normally just play manager mode and that's it. Um, but Clary brought me, I had to go online and play him in FIFA 20. He just beat me 6-3. Um, I would, I thought there was two glitch goals in there. So it was probably more fourth three tomorrow, but I might not go back on to be honest. But it, so that one didn't answer your question. Your question was something to do with fitness, but um, yeah, about it. yeah, we went for a run yesterday, Tobes, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. No, we do. I think we do. I think we've got a little group chat in the house parties getting quite popular. And um, mm. we go on there, I think, what, track organised it or you organised it, Maxi? Yeah, do we did track, a three-minute plank. Three-minute plank at 2 p.m. That's exciting. Yeah. Is it a bit frustrating, I guess, we had this big pre-season that everyone was talking about. We are feeling pretty fit come round one and it almost, to a sense, goes to waste? Um. I don't think it goes to waste. I think pre-seasons, you can bank up. Um, I, I like to think I'm as fit as I am now because of four or five pre-seasons in a row rather than the actual one we just did. And to be fair, I didn't do the last sort of eight weeks as well. So um, I, this little bit is more mental frustration that you're going back to stuff that you were doing in the middle of October, like the pretty basic running. And um, we can't do it, obviously, with anyone else. So we've got to be running by ourselves and... Um, yeah, the mental aspect of, of what we're in right now is pretty frustrating. But um, at the moment, we've still got a job, which is something that we can look at that's um, going a lot better than a lot of other, other people around Australia. So um, if the little thing is we have to do a mundane pre-season by ourselves, I'm pretty happy to do that. And obviously, we've got to talk a bit about the game. It was a big day for you, Tobes. Uh, obviously, a crazy one finding out on the way there that it was going to be the last game of the season. but. Must have enjoyed your day win nonetheless. Yeah, it was good. Um, obviously against uh, West Coast, a good side. But yeah, just good to be out there, um, especially with Cosy, you know, someone who just come into the club this year and I've gotten really close to him for, um, since he's been here. So yeah, no, it was really good to debut with him. And receiving the jumper from Nev, was that a pretty special moment? Yeah, yeah, very special because obviously Nev's also been another one that's not only helped me, but Cosy as well, so much through our journeys at the club so far. So um, just because our parents went there, it was probably right that Nev presented it. Yeah. Is it is it true that you requested me to present it? Oh, I may or may not have, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the chance to present Ed Langdon and Mitch Brown. Ed Langdon was pretty impressive on the weekend, wasn't he? 
Yeah, I'd, I'd take full credit for that. Um, the pre-match speech that I, that I gave Ed, his parents were better than me. We had obviously a, a Skype sort of Zoom thing of his parents and I don't know what they did, but they, they did like a short film sort of set up. Um, yeah, it was crazy. So, um, no, Ed, Ed played some good footy and Tomo on the other wing and um, also got to present Mitch Brown. Me and Mitch played Sandy Dragons together back in 2008. <laughs> Um, which seems a long time ago. And uh, obviously he's been at Geelong and Essendon and Sandy Zebras and um, a few other clubs. So to get to play with each other 11 years down the track, it's it's an interesting little journey we've both taken. And Jack Viney was one who I thought was pretty impressive. Obviously, become vice-captain this year. And 34 disposals, he was everywhere. Yeah, he played, he played, he played really well. Um, our inside mids throughout our three games that we played, Obviously, the two Marsh games and the one one of them sort of dominated in each game. Track obviously had the first, Clayton was easily in the second, and Jack's the third. So it just shows that we're sharing the load a lot. Now we just need Angus. When we finally get back, Angus can be the fourth and dominate against, I think it's GWS round two, but who knows who we're going to have round two. I think a common theme among supporters coming off last weekend's game was a bit of the same old as far as winning the contested ball, getting the inside 50s and failing to convert. Probably more one for you, Max. Did you feel there was a change from last year on the weekend? Uh, for people to say that was the same old actually quite frustrates me a little bit. Um, I've, there was so many positives to take from the game apart from the first 10 minutes, um, which was pretty upsetting. Um because after the 10 minutes uh, went, we were relatively even with them throughout the game. They're a much more mature team, played a lot of footy together. Um, and I saw a lot of positives. Uh, the inside 50 count, no matter how you look at it, even if we were losing games for the inside 50 count last year, that's a positive to have in our way. And it shows that we can work with that. And um, it's only going to take Tom McDonald, Sam Wiedemann when he's in, Mitch Brown, these guys to really gel together to potentially kick some goals for us. And... But the, but the positives way out the negatives for me from the weekend, like seeing Toby and Cozzy debut, um, seeing Tomo and, and, and Langers dominate on, on, on the wings, another game for Steve and Jake Lever together. Um, it looked like we were building for a really good three, four weeks. So it's actually quite disappointing that we don't get to build and, and, and go through that journey now. We have to wait. But um, if anyone is not motivated by that game. Obviously, it was a pretty sour game because the scores were low, short quarters, the game, AFL was already over. Um, I can see how people were looking at it, but when I was out there and feeling it, it felt like we'd really improved in where we were last year. You both touched on Cozzy. Pretty exciting. That first two minutes, he runs down the whole field, picks up, just misses, but he's going to provide some highlights for the future. Sorry? The last little bit, sorry, what did you say? Cozzy, speak about Cozzy. Yeah, just talk oh, about Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's, he's, very, he's a very exciting player. No, yeah, something that these fans should really be looking forward to in the coming years because, yeah, you can saw just a little snippet of what you can do on the weekend, um, especially when the quarters go longer. If they go, for, if they go back to, you know, 30-minute, 25-minute uh, quarters, I think he'll be, he'll get like, more chance to see what he can actually do. Very good. Right. We're going to take a short break now. We're going to get Lily Mithin on the line and we'll be back with some more after this. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the deeds. Welcome back inside Melbourne here with Max Gorn, Kobe Bedford and the superstar from the weekend, Lily Mithin. Welcome, Lil. Thanks, Ben. Um, I'm glad we got to reunite and finish off uh, inside Melbourne um, with a couple of extra people. I'm loving it. Unfortunately, our AFLW season ended a bit shorter than we would have liked, but uh, we're back now. How's the size of your head at the moment? You kicked the match winner. You were doing some dances after the game. <laughs> have you come down? Almost, almost as big as mine. <laughs> uh, not quite, Maxie. I'm, I'm actually surprised my head's fitting in this screen at the moment. It's um, the girls are yeah severely worried. They've sent me to um, the medical centre a couple of times just to make sure it hasn't completely exploded. But um, no, it was a it was a great way to finish the season, and I'm glad we could uh, finish off with a win. Um, you know, disappointed we're not playing any more footy, but uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Talk us through the celebration because <laughs> it was something else. <laughs> Do you really want me to talk about it? I want to hear it. How it happened. Oh, no, I, I don't think I can talk about it. I, I, I can't explain. There's no words for that level of excitement. Like, 
I literally had a fit. I think the girls were quite like scared for my health and safety and just not sure if I'd recover from the amount of excitement I endured in those last couple of minutes. But um, yeah, I'm glad to see that you've made a gif out of it, Benny, and, and the gif is now trending. Very good. Now, the boys also enjoyed it down at Captain Field. Is that a, a good moment to watch Maxi and Tobes? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, it was a good last 10 minutes. Tex was on fire. Yeah. I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if you've listened to the last 90 seconds, Lil, but when you were having your set shot, Michael Hibbard was yelling out, kick it to Tex. Um, <laughs> so I felt like they were more comfortable with the ball in Tex's hands, but Lil, you proved them wrong. Yeah. I did hear uh, someone say she can't kick it that far or she doesn't have the distance. What, what are you I, think it, I, I think it was Hamzy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was Hamzy. It was Hamzy. It was Hamzy. Yeah. Because uh, I messaged him and said, what's the deal with that? Like, come on, Harmsy, like, give me a spell. And he's like, Lil, it wasn't me. It was definitely Harmsy. Yeah, it was Harmsy. <laughs> it was Harmsy. Seven and a half minutes left. We kicked one goal and we needed three to win. What changed there, Lil? I don't know. I think it was sort of, it was the last opportunity to to keep our season alive. And, and a few things started to go away and we, we strung some good footy together, which was nice. And, I guess it was probably frustrating that we're only sitting on one goal five and um, when we kicked another, we sort of built a bit of belief and were able to hold on a little bit better than what GWS were. But, um, yeah, no, they were a tremendous side all day and, and we were only very lucky to um, to run away with the win. I think it was someone said in the change rooms, we literally just got away with a robbery. We just robbed a bank. So um, I'm glad we could string a couple of good minutes and put it together and, yeah, and win. It was a pretty amazing season. Obviously, injuries heavily interrupted it. You need 23 girls to name a squad, and we had 20 available for a final. It was a pretty resilient effort just to to get that win, wasn't it? Oh, you just you just literally could not script this season, and then for it to end the way it has, um, it's just mind boggling. I can't I can't quite wrap my head around it yet. The way that I guess the soldiers kept getting knocked down and then someone else would step up and have a run and then they'd get injured and then someone else would come back in. um, I guess it just shows the true character of the group and um, the talent and the depth that we've got at the footy club. I think that'll hold us in really good stead for years to come. And a shame we couldn't continue to um, play some good footy and just do the Melbourne Colours proud. And you have said every footy cliche in five minutes have been into I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) It's just going to hold us in good stead, Lil. I mean, that's yeah, it will though. Well, if you know, it right? will. If, you, yeah, it if, will. You, if you're playing young girls, yeah. early, then maybe what they're ready. Correct. Like, it's just it just makes sense. Yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to bat them off. It's just yeah. it's just common yeah. sense, my friend. <laughs> oh, to let Crystal Petrovsky you know she was debuting is that a pretty exciting moment for you? Yeah, it was. It was. Um, to be honest, I only knew ten minutes before, so I didn't really know what I was going to say, but. Um, yeah, it was really special, um, especially because I was debuting at the same time. Like, found out that day and then I went home that night and had to tell my cousin that she was debuting. So, yeah, very special. And, Lil, you must have been happy to have her in the team. You were formally voted the most annoying teammate, but I think Crystal has stolen that. Is that a good result? Yeah, great result. I'm, um, I'm sick of this <laughs> annoying tagline. Um, I'd like to think it's funny, but apparently it's annoying. Um, Crystal's not funny. She is just annoying. I'm sure Toby would agree. And yeah, she's talkative. Your top mate, Lil, who you're going to be spending a lot of time with in isolation. Kate Hall is up for goal of the year. Do you think that deserves the win? Oh, definitely. And I'm just hoping she takes home the cash so she can support our household, given that no one's working. Where um, is she? So, yeah. where is she? She's out and about. I think she's gone for a walk. She was sick of my she's company. So. Get her inside. Yeah. Isolation. Isolation. Get her inside. Isolation. No, Isolation. She's a, well, she's allowed to be outside. She's allowed to be outside. Um... <laughs> But no, I think vote for her because, yeah, I don't know if it's five or ten grand or if there's any money at the moment, but if there is any, it's uh, going toward my grocery shopping. That would be a good result. <laughs> now, Lil, you haven't really set us up nicely there. You've got a white background. You are on the front bar last night. It was a much nicer setup, but some real technical difficulties. Uh, I know. Your appearance? Yeah, the front bar didn't go so well, did it? Um, they did a couple of tests. All the tests worked fine. Came to me in a live cross and... Wow, didn't we just flop? Um, yeah, the audio didn't quite work. And unfortunately, you got to see me, but I just didn't think you could hear me. So I was probably talking absolute smack. So it's probably a positive for society. Did you, did you, did you flop? Didn't you go well? You almost, no, does that mean, line, does that mean you, dropped out. Does that mean you performed like Mr. Quickie? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> there's no race horsing happening anyway, Gorney, so no Mr. Quickie to follow. <laughs> no, that's all right. Well, Will, thanks very much for joining us. We're going to let you go. Uh, congratulations on a super effort last Saturday, a great season, and hopefully we get the chance to actually have a final AFLW podcast at some stage in the future. Thanks, Ben. Good luck self-isolating, guys. <laughs> See you, Lil. <laughs> See you, all right, now we're going to move into some questions from the outer. Plenty of questions were sent through from the fans. Uh, Nikki would love to hear more about your journey, Toby, becoming an AFL player through the Demon Academy. Do we have enough yeah. time? Huh? Do we have enough time to go through Toby's journey? It just it goes for yeah, hours. It? it is a long journey. I'm not going to lie. It's a very long Here journey. we go. I'll just, I'll just go the shortened version. So basically, uh, I was playing at Dane Ong Stingrays. Um, and got picked up in the academy through there. Um, and then I think that was in the, my bottom age year of TAC Cup, so when I was 17. Um, I spent a lot of time with um, Nev and then came in to the club a few times, so met the boys at Gorney a few times. Um, and then, yeah, from there, it kind of took off in my draft year. I came in a bit more and then, yeah, I was lucky enough to get picked by Dees on the night. Very good. Shortened version. I like it. Another yeah. one from Nikki for Max. Uh, are you going to work on any Jaffel recipes? Uh, oh, I mean, the hospitality industry, Benny, is struggling. Um, so the Jaffel truck's still out there, but I don't know how much longer it could be out there. We're just waiting for ScoMo to give us the word there. But um, Takeaway. Yeah, takeaway is still allowed at the moment. So yeah. I might. I might try and see if I can source out some new Jaffel recipes. Um, maybe Easter's coming. Maybe put some hot cross bun Jaffel type setup. Oh, yeah. Another one here. Who's the toughest player you've ever played on and why? Toby might not have many options from one game. Yeah. <laughs> Who did you play on the weekend, Tops? Uh, Lewis Jett was pretty good. It wasn't there you go. tough. It was fast. It was very fast. Yeah, hard to um, play on. Uh, mine would be... When Dean Cox and Nick Nat were a, were a partnership, because um, yeah. when you survived your little bit of Nick Nat, then Cox, you would come in and run you around for um, 20 minutes. Then Nick Nat would come back in and jump on your head and then Cox, you would come back. And um, I think I played on them in Coxie's last ever game in Perth as well. So they were doing everything they can to make sure he got the ball. It was an incredibly hard day. I had Jamar, but... Um, I think that was Russian's last game as well for the club. It was all one of, so it was um, that was a hard challenge. Now, Will's asking Max if it felt any different running out as captain. Any expectations? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, felt weird just because there was no fans on the weekend. Um, I don't. Maybe the next time I run out of there's fans, and then I'll suss out if it's weird as captain as well. But um, majority of the vibe I was getting was no fans. And also we got told there was no AFL for about an hour before the game as well. So um, yeah. I'm not sure if the captaincy was what was weirding me out on the weekend. What was your pep talk like just before the first bounce? Did you go for a joke? Did you go something inspiring? Was there something you uh, about what? I can't remember entirely. I think I said something about we're the only people playing at the moment and everyone else would want to be in our shoes, which yeah. I think would be right, but... Um, it didn't work that one, so I might try a different one next time. <laughs> Maybe you joke. Now, Max, favourite New Zealand cricketer of all time from Jimmy? Uh, we'll go through the cricket bat. Um, this one here is Brendan McCullum. Uh, Martin, Martin Guptil. You see that, the Guptil? Uh, but my favourite, sorry, I'll put the bat away. Um, <laughs> my favourite, uh, Jesse Ryder. Um, purely because he can put a, a skirt, he can put a schooner down quicker than he can bowl. Um, I don't know. Actually, Dan, Dan the Man Vittori. Dan the Man Vittori. That probably would have been my guess for someone. Else. Now, who wears the biggest boots? That is a weird question, but it is on the list. Who wears the biggest boots at the club? Uh, I think Oscar McDonald. I think he's a, a 15. Austin Brake is a 15. And yeah, Mike Austin Jackson's Brake. a 15. What size are you, Max? 14. 14. There's four. There's four 15ers: Prucy, Bradkey, McDonald, and Jackson. And I'm 14. There you go. Wasn't a bad question in the end. Matthew's asking who's the biggest larrikin around the club. Actually, with the with the shoes, Toby Toby's feet are the same size as his girlfriend's. They actually share shoes. That, that's actually that's actually true. I yeah. do. Yeah. 
So do you have small feet or does she have massive feet? I've got small feet. I'll admit it. I've got small feet. They're not too oh. small. They're, they're, they're considered small feet. They're eight and a half, nine men's. And she's just got bigger feet for women. Big feet for and you women. Wear, do you wear her heels? Ha, that's, that's funny. So no? No, I'm guessing. Yeah, no, no, of course. Okay, just checking. Uh, biggest larrikin? Um, uh, Melksham? Or track? Both. Track. Yeah. Oh, Mal- Malky segment's pretty funny. Or oh, Harmsy. Oh, yeah. No, track. Track. A few options there. We've just got a notification saying this meeting is about to expire. So we're going to wrap this up pretty shortly. Oh, Matt, really? another question for you. One from Finn. What's the tattoo on your foot, man? Uh, I've got a few tattoos. I'll go through them all. Uh, this is this is for my wedding finger. So that's Jess. That's the J. Um, if we break up, um, obviously we won't. But I'll have to find someone starting with J. Um, I've got a wine glass there because uh, I like wine. Um, hold on, we'll get to my feet because my feet are pretty good. There's a bike tattoo there. You see the bike? <laughs> Yeah. And that's my foot. Is that on my foot? I can't tell. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's great podcasting. That says work on Captain Play Like a Pirate, um, which I got on Mad Monday in 2011. Um, who, who puts a pub across the road from a tattoo parlor is what I want to know. But, uh, yeah, I went in there, I got that tattoo, and I have lived by it ever since, to be honest. Um, work hard, play hard is the is the kind of vibe there. Um Play hard has has sort of stopped a little bit, Benny, in the my last couple of years. But it's a it's a fun tattoo. Toby, you got any tattoos? No, I actually don't. No. You're gonna get aren't, aren't you gonna get Sylvie on your ribs? No chance. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> all right, last question. Then we'll wrap this up. Uh, how will you all stay in touch during isolation? <laughs> Quite a good one. Obviously, you can't have gatherings of forty six teammates. What's the go? Uh, I'm looking forward not to seeing a couple, to be honest. Um, so you, you're Tom McDonald's of the world. I'm excited to get a month away from him. Um, but no, there is, there's lots of things. There's obviously the app we're using now, which is Zoom. Uh, we've done a couple of meetings on Zoom. Um, there's another app called House Party, which every man and their dog is on at the moment, uh, which yeah. is going off. Um, there's WhatsApp. Uh, there's lots of ways to stay in touch and there's all there's different challenges that we might put in over this next month to keep our minds ticking over as well. So it's going to be an exciting little month. Hey, I've got to work out how to be captain when I can't see anybody as well. So that's going to be fun. Very good. Boys, thanks very much for your time. I appreciate you jumping on and I think this has been smoother than I perhaps thought. Can I ask yeah. why you have a fun size footy? Uh just working on the skills. Um, <laughs> so, very close to extend the uh, playing lot, playing roster. So, if Tim Land's watching, uh, yep. pick me. Uh, pick me. This has been Inside Melbourne, Bradley Bocci, Bye, Zurich.